I, Dr. Rita Pratap, former head of the department, drawing and painting, University of Rajasthan, Jaipur. I am going to speak on the history of Japanese art. Module 17, the Momoyama period, the age of the great decorators, 1573 to 1615. The Kano style of large-scale decorative painting came into its own in the brief but hectic Momoyama period and the decades immediately. Politically, the Momoyama period, so called after the site of Hideyoshi Last Castle, lasted from 1573 to 1615. Three dictators, Nobunaga, Hideyoshi, and Liyasu, demonstrated their power and wealth by the construction of castles and palaces of a magnificence hitherto unknown in Japan. Nobunaga at Ayushi pillaged after his death, Hideyoshi at Osaka destroyed in 1615 and Jura in Kyoto and at Momoyama dismantled at his death. Liasu at Nagoya and Ido, now Tokyo. For the decoration of these buildings, they called upon the services of bold and accomplished painters. The first member of the Kano family to rise to this formidable challenge was Itoku. Kano Takanobu, Kahio Yusho, Hasegawa Tohaku, Kano Sanraku, and Kano Tanyu. Was the other decorators of the Momoyama period. The Momoyama period lasted just over four decades from 1573 when Ashikaga shogunate was finally overthrown by the Toyatomi clan after the years of civil war until 1615 when in turn the Tokugawa clan burned down their opponents castles and seized power. They were to rule the country until 1867, at which time the shogunate collapsed and the imperial power was once more restored. The Momoyama period was an era that marked a splendid renaissance in all artistic fields. A glittering bridge between the medieval Muromachi and the following very different 250 years of Tokugawa administration and control. With the new regime, social classes were jungled to some extent and while some of the old guard lost their status and wealth, others who had been on the winning side found themselves well rewarded. The victorious ruling warlords built themselves magnificent castles with huge reception and audience rooms and hired the leading artists to decorate them with wall paintings and screens. The purpose was certainly to impress, perhaps also to intimidate and it can be seen that the powerful monumental designs with their elaborate gold leaf decoration were calentated to underscore power, prestige and fabulous wealth. The Screen Painting The Kano style of large-scale decorative painting came into its own in the brief but hectic Momoyama period 
and the decades immediately following to understand how it was that japanese painting burst so suddenly into this rich extravagant bloom we need only a glance at political events during the first half of the 16th century the ashikaga power had steadily declined and all over japan the feudal lords were once more fighting among themselves by 1568 oda nobunaga in a campaign of terrible ruthlessness had risen to power as a de facto shogun two years after his murder in 1582 his general hideyoshi the napoleon of japan assumed power and by 1590 completed the reunification of japan that nobunaga had begun when hideyoshi died in 1598 the struggle for power began once more and it was not until 1515 that tokugawa iyasu succeeded in crushing his rivals and making himself shogun then for the first time in a century japan was at peace the tokugawa family ruled on the whole securely and well until the restoration of the imperial power in 1867 politically the momoyama period so called after the site of hideyoshi's last castle lasted from 1573 to 1615 as a period in the history of japanese art however it may be said to have extended for some years into the tokugawa era the three dictators nobunaga hideyoshi and iyasu demonstrated their power and wealth by the construction of castles and palaces of a magnificence hitherto unknown in Japan Nobunaga at Ayuchi pillared after his death Hideyoshi at Osaka destroyed in 1615 and Jura Kute in Kyoto and at Momoyama dismantled at his death Iyasu at Nagoya and Edo now Tokyo For the decoration of these buildings they called upon the services of bold and accomplished painters not for them the intimate subtleties of zen ink painting themselves warriors and men of action hideyoshi started life as a servant in a village shrine they demanded paintings that were realistic in content clear cut in form rich in color and huge enough in scale to cover the walls of halls in which several hundred samurai at a time might kneel in audience sometimes the folding screens were carried out into parks for great picnics and there is a story a legend perhaps that hideyoshi was borne out to audience with the emperor along a road lined for 18 miles with screens taken from his momoyama palace kano itoko kano itoko was the fourth generation of the kano school who developed a style of brush painting that was not only on a monumental scale but also showed a new kind of composition and framing of the image he was commissioned to paint a large number of works to decorate the new azuchi castle of oda nobunaga 1534 to 1582 and later the castle of his ruling successor toyotomi hideyoshi 1536 37 to 1598 at osaka 
these castles were destroyed in military struggles and so some imagination had to be added to remaining evidence in order to reconstruct a pictures of these legendary edifices. The first member of the Kano family to rise to this formidable challenge was Itoku, 1543 to 90. As a young pupil of Motonobu, he painted in the restrained Chinese manner. A beautiful example of his early work being the sliding doors decorated with cranes and pine trees. It's a detail dated 1566, painting on sliding door executed for Juko Inn of Diet Toku Ji in Kyoto. He was already famous when at the age of 24, he met Nobunaga, who at once commissioned him to decorate the new castle at Asuchi. In this great task, which took four years, Itoku, for the first time, employed gold leaf for large areas of the ground and clouds. The use of gold was nothing new in Japanese art. It had been applied with great delicacy in Fujiwara Buddhist painting and in Yamato narrative hand scrolls. But never had it been employed on such a scale or to such dazzling effect as now. It not only proclaimed the wealth of the pattern, but also fulfilled the practical purpose of reflecting light and so illuminating the dark inner reaches of the huge audience halls. As the Momoyama decorators gained confidence, its use spread to the whole of the background. The colors to harmonize with it had to be still further intensified and the result was a scheme of interior decoration of pulsating splendor. Another painting attributed to Kano Ituku is the famous cypress trees. Eightfold screen, color gold leaf and ink on paper, Momoyama period and at present in the Tokyo National Museum. Here the large cypress tree is not an exercise in the use of ink, but a massive, even sculpturally modeled form produced in color. Rich browns and red model the general shapes. Ink supplies the bark texture. Manichite green silhouetted the little boughs as well as creating their leaves. Rocks are now colored and placed against azurite blue areas indicating water. The background as well as the swirling clouds is indicated in gold leaf applied to the surface of the stretched paper. The composition is startling, especially for one used to see European paintings with the tree depicted properly in context, the earth below and the sky above. But Itoku's genius has created an effect which is extraordinarily powerful and by cutting off the top and bottom sections of the tree, the image of weight and age is all the more vivid. Overwhelming through this picture, one sees today is made of a single tree painted on sliding doors that stretched for nearly 30 meters, that is over 98 feet. Another example of this expressive style is seen in a screen in the Honolulu Academy of Art USA, titled 
old pine and cherry tree, ink and colors on gold leaf, This six panel screen shows the mid section of an old pine with branches and clumps of green needles floating like clouds over dead twigs. Huge rocks painted with strong brushstrokes balance the composition on the right hand side and a flowering cherry tree and red Azalea add points of color. Small grasses and dwarf sasa bamboo complete the picture. The trunk itself is spread over two panels and its age is enhanced with white patches of lichens that echo the delicate petals of the cherry blossoms. The background is of pure gold leaf and it is not difficult to imagine the effect of such a painting that would have had in the dark rooms of a Momoyama castle when seen by candlelight at night or in daylight softened and diffused through paper shoji screens. So also Itoku is famous for his bold and monumental designs on gold screens while were favored by the military elite for decoration of their castles. The case was carried to the courts and Togan won. A graphic instance of the absurd lengths to which the Japanese painters carried their obsession with art lineages. Tohaku disliked <coughs> the Kano tradition but like Itoku, he painted in both monochrome and colored decorative style. His screen of a pine wood in the mist, pair of a six-fold screen, ink on paper, belonging to late Muromachi or Momoyama period, at present in the Tokyo National Museum, reveals the true originality and daring of Tohaku and his generation. Space is suggested by means of graded ink tones, implying swirling mist around pine trees. Shows his debit to So Ami and more remotely to Mu Chi. In addition to a host of lesser commissions, the dynamic Itoku also decorated Hideyoshi's palace at Jura Kyute and his castle at Osaka. Tasks that he accomplished with the aid of his brothers Sosho and Naga Nobu, his sons Mitsunobu and Takanobu, and his adopted son San Raku. Much of his work has perished and of what survives little can be attributed to him with any certainty. But there can be no disputing his place as the true creator of the Momoyama style. He died of overwork at the age of 47. Kano Takanobu The strength of the Chinese inspiration in the early work of the Kano school is shown by a screen attributed to Itoku's son. Kano Takanobu, now in the Seattle Art Museum. Its theme is the four enjoyments of the Chinese gentlemen, painting chess, music and calligraphy. In the chess playing scene, the subject, the perspective and the drawing of the figures and of the rocky foreground are purely Chinese, being derived ultimately from the Mahisha tradition as stylized by the Ming Academy. But the brittleness of the drawing
tendency towards broad flat washes like that of the rock face behind the three chess players. The decorative use of clouds to mask off the top of the picture and above all the rich color and gold leaf background. All these features mark a further stage in the evolution of the Kano school away from the Chinese painting. Kahio Yushu. Not all the great decorators of the Momoyama period were members of the Kano family, though all felt its influence. Kahio Yushu, 1533 to 1515. For example, while a Zen monk in Kyoto was a pupil of Motonobu, later he became a professional artist and tutor to an imperial prince. He probably assisted Itoku in the decoration of the Jura Kyute palace for Hideyoshi. Yushu has left a magnificent series of screens, chiefly of flowers and flowering trees, such as the screen of peonies at Mayoshinji or that of plum trees at Kananji. In these, his most notable contribution to the technique of screen painting is much in evidence. Hitherto, Kano painters had tended to confine their bright colors chiefly to trees, flowers, and gold backgrounds, painting their rocks in monochrome ink in the old Chinese fashion. Yu show while preserving the ink base of his rocks, washes over them with a brilliant mineral green, thus completing the color harmony and heightening still further the decorative effect. If the rich color could be stripped from one of Yusho's big screen paintings, it would be seen that the underlying brushwork suggests the controlled fire and energy of the expert swordsman. This Yusho, in fact, was that he shared with his pupil Nitin and the tree master and designer Koetsu, a passionate love of the military arts. This may seem a strange alliance of interests, but such men inspired by Zen ideals looked upon swordsmanship and even armed combat as an exercise in speed, skill, and self-discipline aimed at the liberation of the spirit and the forgetting of self. The flash of the sword, the release of the arrow, the sweep of the brush are not means to an end, but ends in themselves. The meaning is in the act as it is for play with the brush in Nitin's celebrated Shrike on a Dead Branch. Hasegawa Tohaku was another screen painter trained in the Kano studio who claimed to represent the fifth artistic generation of Sheshu. His claim was contested by the Ankoku Togan, the decorator of the Obaya Inn at Dai Tokuji. The case was carried to the courts and Togan won, a graphic instance of the absurd lens to which Japanese painters carried their obsession with art lineages. Of the two rivals, Tohaku was the more versatile and original painter. His masterpiece in the colored style is the great sequence of paintings on sliding panels in the Chis Haku Inn, a temple of the Shingon sect, Kyoto. One such example is of a maple tree and autumn plants. It is a detail dated 1592, painting original sliding doors in the Shaunji temple, colors on gold paper, Shijaku in Kyoto.
that Robert Paine has called perhaps the greatest examples of Momoyama art in strong color on gold ground which have survived. They are notable not merely for the grandeur of design but also for Tohaku's characteristic use of liquid washes of color in combination with gold. He was equally a master of monochrome ink painting in the Zen manner. His screen of a pine wood in the mist shows his debit to So Ami and more remotely to Mo Chi Kano Sanraku. The last important representative of the Momoyama style was Kano Sanraku, 1559-1635. Hideyoshi discovered him as a boy and handed over him to Itoku, whose favorite pupil and adopted son he became. Sanraku too was highly versatile painter. Indeed, versatility was an essential in these men who were called upon to execute commissions in a wide variety of settings and subjects. For Hideyoshi, San Raku decorated the Momoyama castle, now destroyed. An illustration shows one of a pair of sliding doors with peonies, which was part of his scheme for the Shinden Imperial Hall, also called the Hall of Peonies, in the Dai Kakuji in Kyoto. The quiet presentation, the carefully balanced composition, the harmonious color, all give these panels an air of stillness and repose, much more suited for the decoration of a Buddhist temple than were the brilliant performances of Itoko and Yusho. There is also a hint of that stiffness and stylization that later became increasingly evident in a painting of the Kano school. San Raku remained loyal to Hideyoshi and to Kyoto all his life. When the capital moved to Edo, he remained behind and his followers took pride in upholding the original Kano tradition of Kyoto called Kyo Kano. But as Edo grew in wealth and power, Kyoto gradually became a cultural backwater, a treasure house of the art of the past, but no longer able itself to infuse new blood into the stream of Japanese painting. Kano Tanyu The transfer of the capital to Edo and Liasu's vast building program put new life into the Kano school there at a time when it might have seemed that no further achievements were possible. Three of Itoku's grandsons, Tanyu, 1602 to 1674, Naya Nobu, 1605 to 1650, and Yasu Nobu, 1673 to 1685, together established their studio in Edo. And this became the official academy under the shogunate. The dominant personality was undoubtedly Tanyu. This dynamic and precautious youth had an audience with the shogun at the age of 10, was made painter in attendance at 16, and was subsequently heaped with honors and court titles. He was extremely versatile. His works include countless scrolls and screens of Chinese subjects in the Chinese ink manner. While at Nikko, he illustrated the life of Liasu in series of color paintings in the Tosa style. He also did important work at Nagoya 
and Edo. His paintings of the great audience hall of the Momoyama Palace were transferred to Nishi Hoganji when the palace was dismantled shortly after Hideyoshi's death. Kanyu's most important commissions was the decoration of the main halls of Liasu's palace of Nijo at Kyoto, which has been called the Versailles of Japan. Here, his chief themes were trees and birds, the most spectacular of all beings, an enormous pine tree. 36 feet long and 16 feet high on the back wall of the fourth hall of the palace. While he was engaged on these colossal schemes, there also flowed from his studio in Edo a constant stream of designs based chiefly on plant forms that were applied to textiles, lacquer, sword guards, pottery and embroidery throughout the length and breadth of Japan. In spite of Kanyu's enormous prestige, the Kano school had by this time explored all the possibilities that were inherent in the style. Although it continued to the official school throughout the Tokugawa period, after Tanyo, it had nothing fresh to contribute and its influence became more and more deadening. It is in the reaction against Kano that new developments in Japanese painting appear.